That's a good nap. Right. So, we're recording, just to let you know. Okay. Um, and excuse my nacho eating. I only have one thing of nachos to like, get through here. <laughs> so, <laughs> shouldn't be too bad. So, what's happening? Did the world end? Nah, the world didn't end. No? <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, we got some rain. Did you guys get rain up there, too? We've been getting lots of rain. Yeah? Pretty continually for the last month and a half. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear that you guys are getting rain. I know it's much needed. Yeah, it was like, I don't know, like after the fire started, I think it was a week of just desert-like conditions. Mm-hmm. And... I know everybody in the community, or at least the ones that knew to do so, gave the intent for rain, and John did his rain dances, and hopefully we did some things to bring it in. Awesome. So it rained like, I don't know, three days in a row, and we have a little reprieve over the weekend, and I think uh, it's supposed to rain next week too, tomorrow. Did you get any um, any flooding? Mm-mm. Well, maybe that was further. I heard of some flooding, but I think it was further south, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if L.A. got rain. I know L.A. had the same issues. Cities getting destroyed and whatnot. Right. I was telling Andrew um, Hamish. I don't know if you guys ever followed him or not, but he has like a really big YouTube channel. He has like 70,000 subscribers. And... I've followed him kind of off and on, not a lot, but I really like how he puts himself out there. He's very, very open, uh, no holds barred kind of discussion. Um, anyway, his house like got burnt and he has, you know, he has his family. He's got the, the wife, he's got a son, her daughter, and they have the cat also. And like last, yeah. last week, everybody I guess. everybody okay? Yeah. Even the cat, apparently. That's what he said in the recent video. They just have to go try and find the cat. I guess they, they got word from the neighbors that the cat did his, his cat magic and somehow like hid in, in the canal or something or under a bush. I don't know. But they're all okay. No more house though. It was called... What was it called? Mm. I forget the name of the city, but... It's somewhere near L.A. He had lived up on the same mountain for like six years. Man. Yeah. A lot of people died in those. It's not at 100, I don't think, but at least as far as the official reports, but mm -hmm. people were burning their cars. It was pretty bad. Is there... Um any word on how they started? No. <laughs> Depends on who's I know telling you. Joe showed me some uh, footage of like the aerial view. Mm -hmm. The neighborhoods where it's like just the houses. Yep. Gone and all the trees around. Uh, and selective houses still standing. It's really. The official non narrative will say for like forest fire, but forest. <laughs> everyone else says some sort of DEW. Yeah. Something like that. Um, I think it's a... To me, it's like the most brazen of the sort of attacks that we've... That I've seen, where the mainstream just completely goes on as normal. But even they weren't going on as normal. To my eyes, even they were kind of like being hush-hush about it. Like not mm -hmm. even doing too much speculating. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know. Yeah. It's like, how far can the balance go before the regular people start talking about it, you know? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Because, like, there's no debate. There's no debate as to whether it's normal or not. There's, like, bushes standing next to a melted car or, like, <laughs> it's, like, laser precision, you know? 
Well, and the houses are like just gone. <laughs> mm-hmm. I drove through the one in um, Sonoma. Yeah. I made a video like, I don't know, three months ago, whenever that fire happened. I don't like that. There would be a tree that's fully green, untouched, and then like a house just like down to cinder blocks. And when did forest fire fires start um getting the residential, you know, like you know, yeah, a spark of uh, lightning in the dry brush. Yeah. You know. I I feel that it's it's more kind of like a stalemate. Because at a certain point, the higher ups know what's going on. It's not like a, it's not like they're like, "What's really happening?" It's not like Trump is like, "What's really happening here?" Trump knows. Everybody knows. It's just that if too much disclosure tries to happen via the mainstream, then the masses are going to panic. Mm. So their level of brainwashing has to be kept. You know. Too much can't come at once because then that will happen and nobody wants that. Mm. So it's, yeah. al it's almost like it's out in the open and most everybody knows, but there's only so much. Even if everybody said, yes, this is what it is, at that point you still have to be like, well, what do we do in that case? Say everybody agreed that's what it was. What do you do, like climb up into the sky and take the thing <laughs> down? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the news stations are not collaborating with the the renegade, you know, conspiracy theory stations. They're not, like, talking to each other, as far as I know. Where would, yeah. the, where would the middle ground be? Mm. Yeah. You know, I saw... Um, at the grocery store the other day I glanced as I sometimes do out of curiosity the um, magazines you know and you go to the checkout and there's the National Enquirer <laughs> and there's a, a front line um, like inside look at all these conspiracy theories that like list them all mm -hmm. you know? were they talking about the fires at all um, I don't I don't know if the fires were on there but um, that's too much even for National Enquirer uh, yeah <laughs> What did I have? Uh, oh, the moon, the moon landing, and nine nine eleven, and mm -hmm. you know the, yep. the big ticket conspiracy theories. <laughs> were they pro conspiracy theory, or were they against it, or did they not really take a stance? Um, it didn't take a stance. It was more like an inside look into all of these theories. This is what like the people discussion. think, but we don't. We're just giving the news. Well, it's <laughs> in the National Enquirer, so most people are like, "Oh, what a bunch of <laughs> right." I could see that as being like an actual venue through which to put some some real things out, if people were privy right, to it. Right. That, that's yeah. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all I ever saw in National Enquirer was just like gossip about celebrities. I didn't ever see them touching on like weather. Right. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's a stalemate. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, if there if there has been so much sort of cover ups and whatnot, then it has to come out. Like you can only even you think when you're a kid and you're telling a lie or something, right? Like, you have to do so much work to support that thing as it goes along and gets bigger. And then you hear, like, it went out to this person and it went out to mom and went out to the neighbor. And now they're all upholding it. And now everybody's, like, collaborating around it. And you're like, oh, man, what did I get myself into, right? Like, the thing falls apart at some point. So if all of this has been, you know, some sort of setup or cover up or whatever, it's going to come it's going to come apart at some point. So it's just a matter of how does that happen without, you know, apocalypse or whatever. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
And the answer would be probably whatever is happening right now. I mean, it is coming out. Like, you can't, it's hard for me to say that there's less awareness now than there was maybe five or ten years ago. Yeah, the awareness seems to be growing for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, More people are talking about it and uh, thoughtful, (laughs) educated uh, ways. Um, yeah. And then a part of you just wants to protect like the kids and whatnot. Like we don't want all this to just go to hell in a handbasket. Right. So there is the part even in myself that's like, I don't even want to like look at this stuff. Cause it's just a lot of it's just gross. You know, it's just yeah. like, yuck. But mm-hmm when things like the fires happen, you can't, it's hard for anybody to keep like hiding within their own sort of narrative. Can't just ignore. Yeah. <laughs> kittens and rainbows, kittens and rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> While you're like running down the road on fire, you're like kittens and rainbows. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where the tipping point would be. But I mean, I guess, to understand and to realize and to know that the behind the scenes sort of evil stuff that's going on, there's the same counterpart to it. So there's every possibility that that stuff all works itself out somehow. And we can just live sort of normal lives Mm -hmm. without the worst case scenario playing out. Yeah. And didn't you, we made a, a video a while back talking about the uh, the the dark is necessary, mm-hmm. right? The light, the light, the dark. Yeah. You know, Alan Watts says as well the whole yep. um, need for uh, each other. One can't exist without the other. Yeah, it's a balance. Yeah. It becomes for me some sort of mental gymnastics when I think about the issues and what's seen versus what's covered up and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's it's mental gymnastics to decide, you know, what am I doing? Am I taking action? Am I going to my local governor and saying like, hey, the guys are like, the bad guys are shooting us with weapons. Like, what do you do exactly? Even if you were going to take action on something. Mm-hmm. Um, that has never seemed, uh, correct for me mm-hmm. because part right. of the beast system thrives on attack. It gets bigger yeah. when you attack it. So to me, it's more self-work for each individual because exactly. the, coll- the collective um, is made of individuals. So like, if you're not, if you're going out there like rah, rah, you know, waving a flag and trying to get everybody to gather under the banner, they're still not doing the self-work. They're having you as the leader, and then also you're making yourself weak because you declared yourself as a leader, and now you're open for attack. And we all know what happens when groups form, and (laughs) that whole thing has been going on forever. Yeah, um, I went to uh, the East Rose congregation I go to that's a Unitarian Mm -hmm. group, and today they had a talk on engaged Buddhism. Mm Mm-hmm. It's fabulous, and uh, one of the things that s- struck me that I, I think about already, but it was nice to have it come up again, was the uh, being versus doing balance. Mm-hmm. That um, within the Unitarian like kind of philosophy, there's a lot of go do do do, social justice, and right the wrongs, and um, tell people what they're doing that's wrong. <laughs> you know, kind of judgy you know yep. really claim not to be um at the, at the root any organized congregation kind of does that but anyway the um the import and the importance of being first mm-hmm. like is being within your uh your own essence you know and with which the, doesn't the require being, doesn't require doing it doesn't require yeah. work no and with, with the being you receive maybe some uh, some insights and some uh, ideas about right action to mm-hmm. do the doing in a thoughtful way that is most beneficial. 
Right. Yeah. In that sense, there isn't anything to do, and I've never said anything different. I've always, my message has always been the same, is that the doing itself is the problem. That's what creates the problem. That's what creates the mental projections both ways. And that's what keeps everybody in fear Mm -hmm. and yada, yada, yada. And then being that we're multidimensional and capable of creating our own reality to an extent, then thus in comes the boogie monster. And not only is it a boogie monster, but it's also multidimensional and horrifying down all the mental layers because we're capable of thinking down those layers. So appropriately, the thing would be that sort of, complicated while you're still on the i'm doing this i'm doing that i'm taking this action i'm taking that action Mm -hmm. and you set you effectively set your own trap yeah and that's not to say that there's no action to be done because there is action i mean we do actions every day you wake well, up. Yeah, exactly. And do things. And the, the the just being doesn't mean going off in the mountainside and I mean I guess it could. <laughs> you could. <laughs> meditating. You, you could know, go like find your cave and, and you know hide in there. And never going into the um the society or right realm, but um. But we've we, we've had people doing that. Are yeah. there still problems outside? Like, <laughs> it's not like the Buddha fixed the world or anything. Mm. Possibly, if anything, he fixed his own self to where he wasn't getting involved with all the drama anymore. And then he could tell everybody else, like, this is optional. You can do it. You can get in the drama. You can have all this stuff. And it will follow your thought patterns, whatever you can think of. You know, depending on what level of manifestation you're at, you'll be living in it. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to do that. Right. There's choice, free will. Mm-hmm. If you're aware. <laughs> yep. You can use it. And there, I mean, you can also, from that stance, from the stance of, well, being sort of quiet internally is the best thing and, you know, work from there. You can also branch out from that and be like that. I can take action. I can do things, but from the more taking the rest of the population into perspective with those actions and free will is still in that, but it's not the thing that like the divide and conquer thing or the, you know, colonization or the let's push our mindset on every other person here with force as the backup it's just not that it's just more it's like painting a picture you know like what you do you're doing something you're putting yourself and your creativity in there but you're not forcing it on people Mm -hmm. well everybody has to come to their own understanding yeah and their own action But if you're in a, in a fire, then you should do something. You should, like, run away or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We watched a video today about this, this guy. He was distraught, and he was, like, walking through these burnt cars, and he was putting the camera in there, and there were, like, skeletons staring back at you, just, like, bones. And then he's, you know, he's he's like, this one woman here, she was putting her lipstick on. He's like, she probably would have gotten away if she wasn't sitting there, like, worried about her makeup. It's, it's probably bad to laugh at, but, you know, like, if something's directly happening to you in the moment, you should do something about it. You shouldn't just sit there and let it eat you, I guess. Right. That, that was, that's another, like, Buddhist saying. The, the disciple will ask his master, he's like, you say, pain isn't real. And the, the master's like, yeah, it's not. And then the guy drops a rock on his toe. <laughs> and he's like, ow, why'd you do that? You know? You can't explain that part away. Like, yes, in a sense, it's not real because everything is passing, but pain in the moment is very real. And yeah. if you have a whole lot of those things lined up, 
like beads on a necklace or something yes all this stuff is passing and it's phenomenal so it's not going to stick around forever but yeah it's a, a sensation mm-hmm. to to embrace and not um you know, we have the the choice in what we do with those sensations i guess yeah. you know if we're going to hate it and fight it and wish it would go away or embrace it and acknowledge it and uh um, well, yeah, let it pass. What you resist persists. Mm-hmm. According to the, the thing. But what I mean, uh, I mean, I, just more sayings that are in my head. I have all oh, these, yeah. these Buddhist <laughs> wisdom things stuck up in there. But, uh. I don't know, for me, it's it's like having the knowledge, and then once you have the knowledge, then use it as a guide, as like a template for how you move through the day, but also don't sit there and be waiting for the hammer to drop every second, right. because then you're not living, right? So like... Well, then you're living in fear. Right. right. <laughs> it's going to happen. Right. Afraid of the sensation. Right. That are unpleasant to experience. Because that's what... Um, I feel like we're preparing for in some sense, not again, even talking about these things is a slippery slope because you talk about Armageddon to somebody who's manifesting their reality and then it comes into the head and they're like, don't think about the pink elephant and they have to think about it, you know? So like there, there is that, but there's also, if there's stuff out and about that's appearing without you having like called it necessarily, then you have to do something about it. You got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. so it's just like having the tools I think and not getting all up in the business like going and parading down the street and you know making lots of noise I I just have never felt like that's very does very much Mm-mm. creates more noise <laughs> yeah more division more noise more division I don't know, how would you say if if the people were more aware as a collective, you know, given the, the sort of depth of this reality and sort of, you know, you know, it goes deeper than the newspapers talk about, you know, say you knew lots of things about that and people were coming into awareness, how would you tell them about that? Without them flipping their lid or trying to <laughs> burn you at the stake or something, you know. I um. I really connect to. Uh, I just was reading some posts by Ashley Aurora, mm-hmm. who I friended through <laughs> you and yeah. just enjoying her posts lately. But mm-hmm. um, she was talking about the the need to heal, you know, within, you know, each person, you know, yeah. take care of their own stuff get out of the way and let you know Gaia <laughs> take over right. but that, I mean that idea of um, there's so many things like you said earlier we what, what are we going to do <laughs> those chemtrails I can like glare at them all day long <laughs> <laughs> right. um, how, you, how dare you appear in my sky right um, but I think helping people to well and I don't know we can only control ourselves so starting within um, coming to some deep realizations of your own being and healing traumas or wounds that keep us in uh, the stories you know stories we tell ourselves that aren't at all based in any sort of reality just Mm -hmm. your based you know um yeah, healing trauma. We're kind of stuck in this. A lot of people are just stuck in this. Um, trauma loops. Trauma loops. And when you're stuck in that place, it's hard to, uh, I don't know. 
I don't know. Well, I mean, we were talking about this earlier. The When you have a bad day or something that's not connected directly to an event that you experience or say a person insulting you or somebody being mean to you or somebody ignoring you or whatever, when you have sort of a, a feeling that sets in, just an energetic wave that rushes through you and you just feel like crap, it's like, it's kind of like, how do you deal with that? And even how could you stop that from coming? Or is it possible to stop that from coming? Oh, man, we were just talking about this last night. I've been reading um, that Mastery of Love book mm -hmm. by um, Ruiz. And there is a bit that I read to Joe. It's about that the very thing, like the, the ability to have the... Uh, like the awareness of the, the sensation, but what we do with it, how we let it affect us, you know, yeah. like building, yeah. building up that self love, yeah. you know, within yourself that you're not seeking love from anything else outside of yourself. So right. you don't need approval from anybody. You don't need love from anybody else. And that if you can recognize everybody else's baggage and poison <laughs> that, um, you know, you can't take it personal because they're, they're dealing with their own shit <laughs> and, yeah. and it just, you know, getting thrown all over the place. But if you're aware of that phenomena and you're not seeking any outside approval or recognition or love, even, um, maybe it makes it a little easier to, you know, deal with people or situations that are yeah. Not positive. <laughs> well, I mean, most of it's not positive. The, yeah. The way it is now is, is most people are in their, like a self-hypnosis. Mm -hmm. And they just are scared to look at. And this for me goes back. For me personally, this goes back to what Lauda calls the false void, which I experienced myself. And I also experienced the opposite of it, but not until later. And this false void thing is, I, th I feel like that's embedded in a lot of people's psyche, deep, deep, deep down. And of course, that goes along with the religions peddling original sin and all of that. All of these things have energetic hooks and barbs that are implanted along with them. And until you see, until you, or maybe until you finally experience what sort of love for yourself actually is, then... You have in the back of your mind like this this horror abyss thing, which is the false void, which is like a created sort of antithesis to what the actual void is, which is not having feelings. It's not having human stuff in it at all. It's not like hor horrifying or good or none of the duality language is in that. Mm -hmm. But the false void it is. So if you're keeping that as like the thing that we must never look at then you're kind of keeping that as yourself because yourself is what is there at the end of it all right somehow mm -hmm. you're still there somehow wherever you wherever whatever is happening so that has that false void thing has people still running from themselves mm -hmm. and running from truly connecting with even with it you know the earth because right. all of all of that all of the natural stuff leads you back to yourself anyway Mm -hmm. all connected <laughs> yeah and all the metal cities and whatnot is keeps you out of it and you know to me that's basically what's been going on here for most of the time that everybody's been here is it's been not necessarily just a hiding from the self but it's like an exploring also the universe is always exploring itself through the creatures and through the people and through the plants through the everything so it's still an exploration, even in the sort of more darker aspects of it. <laughs> but it's a lot like, if you haven't started, if you haven't meditated, if you haven't sat in silence for a while, if you must be constantly 
doing that thing, the projection thing, and you can't be present ever, well, then you're going to be in for a very rude awakening when the, the card house finally topples down because, like, you'll just be forced to look at it. Everyone's forced to look at it at some point anyway, so it's better to start, you know, while you're sort of still in control. At least there's a semblance of control there. Right. Like, why not? Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, a lot of drive and, you know, inspiration to try to help get other people to that same place. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, we're, we can only be in control of our own self, right? So... Yeah, you, you can't, find, you can't, you, you know, like with what you do here, you know, with your snail show and your YouTube channel, um, people come, people show up, Yeah, you know, that connect to something you said or, it, you know, even, um, yeah, we just, we, we live our, our journey and take the information that we have and the awareness and insight and, uh, we can subtly, you know, inspire or, um, help others that are ready to hear whatever they're ready to hear. But if we go <laughs> trying to force everybody into uh, this awareness, it's it's not going to work. kind of has to like flow and yeah. manifest. And as people are ready, they are drawn to those that will help them. Yeah, and, and everybody, you know, most people are waiting for there to be some sort of a trick or like, you know, he's holding some cards behind his back and, he's, you know, there's something else going on there. And it's very difficult for people to accept that someone is simply doing this just because. Just because, like, that's what it feels correct to do and there isn't an expectation. Like, that's hard for people to even accept it as a possibility because the masses have been conditioned to think and behave in the opposite way. Mm -hmm. So it always feels like there must be some catch or something. But even in that position, at least as far as what I do, even if people are thinking that, still, like, I'm still not, I don't care what you do with it. So if you want to think that, then do. Yeah. If you don't, then... Best way to be. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, then come on the show and talk about it or something. <laughs> <laughs> And people are scared of silence. People are scared of, like, what happens when all the busyness and the goals and the accomplishments and the things that they want and all that. Once, what happens when they see that all of those are passing, you know? Like, what, what, do they, what do you do with yourself when you see that's kind of bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> and they people think, like, my life is over at that point and it's not like your life isn't over you're just now not attached to those things you can still even get happy you know like create something and have a nice painting or whatever and you can feel just as happy it's just that you're like i know the painting is going to be gone too at some point so like enjoy it while it lasts really and you know what is what is the key to true happiness no it's um not really in the uh, seeking after the physical things, you know. Although our culture tells us that <laughs> we're consumerists, we must mm -hmm. we must believe that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but really, I think true happiness comes with an ability to um, have contentment, you know, in any situation. Yeah. Or an acceptance, and uh, yeah. At least that's the start. <laughs> yeah, acceptance and stop not like not always thinking that you know even what you know what you need or what you want. Like we think we know what we want, we think we know what we need. And usually those thoughts have been put in by the parents or by the society and they still have nothing to do with what you want or need. And actually mm -hmm. when you give that up and like let go of the control or the perceived control to to an extent and even just go talk to the woods and be like how can i fit how can i like be in this situation you'll learn more from them than 
go sit with yes. a cat for, <laughs> go sit with a cat for five minutes you'll learn more about any you know, the whole life rather than listening to anything on the tv or your parents or whatever yeah and the, the thing is is they teach stillness and they teach silence they teach the present moment and they teach that all of the noise and stuff is fine we like playing but it's not the real thing the real thing is like not moving it's like silence it's something it's, it's something beyond the phenomenal and people are scared people are going to be scared of that until they actually get into it and they find and they it. realize it's actually quite amazing <laughs> yeah it's not scary at all there's not there's no there's no problems there but I if think you, there's a lot of um, you've been carrying around your your santa bag of of crap your whole life then you're like i'm gonna be too light if i drop this like i'll float up in the sky or something and that's gonna be really scary <laughs> oh man yeah yeah But it's not. It's just like whatever you felt as a kid, like that's the same thing. It's just the kid isn't sitting there thinking like, oh, this is just like a dream like reality and they're just playing, you know? They're not thinking. And that's also about. a key to true happiness <laughs> is being able to tap into that. Yeah. You know? The the child like uh wonder and playfulness without needing to be somewhere or achieve something. <laughs> yep. You know, just in the moment play discovery curiosity and play doesn't require any work it doesn't require any setup for the most part you can go outside and explore a canal for three hours you didn't achieve anything you didn't build any dams you didn't like save the world you just tromped around in some rocks and some mud and like scared some bullfrogs and you're as <laughs> happy as it's possible to be you know Elena still wants to fly. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> Mommy, make me fly. Make me fly. Mommy. <laughs> Daddy, make me fly. Yeah. Does she does she tell you her dreams? Does she have dreams? She does. Actually, yeah. this last night she had a dream that her and Joe went into her school when nobody was there. And they it was like midnight and she didn't want to go to sleep. She tells me later after I like was asking more questions about her initial. She, she was at me. school at midnight. Yeah, at midnight with nobody there, and then her and Joe turned the clock back to one p.m. <laughs> and then the weird thing was, she said, is that all the clocks changed. So like mm. in the whole universe, all the time changed. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. <laughs> so when when they changed the clocks back to one, did like everybody appear in the school and school is just on as normal? She didn't, she didn't give me all those details, <laughs> but partially she it was so she could watch her favorite show, which is Peep in the Big Wide World. <laughs> Starts at one o'clock. It's like the only show she watches. <laughs> <laughs> do they let her watch? Do they let them watch things at all at school? No. no. Well, sometimes the teachers will show them stuff on her phone. Mm -hmm. But, um, Yeah. And then the night before that, she actually had a flying dream that she held on to a leaf and it like it was a big leaf and it took her way up in the sky. <laughs> nice. <laughs> she's, is she in, she's in regular school now? Like it's a Montessori kindergarten. Montessori. Yeah. So it's, um, a pre-K through kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So like three to six year olds. There's, I think, nine kids total in her kindergarten class, and it's full day. Oh, wow. So they get, like, special attention from the teachers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a school also in San Francisco called Waldorf. You've, you've, oh, yeah. You've heard of those ones? They're yeah, similar. Yeah, actually, right? my um, good friend, Minnie, uh, moved to San Francisco and taught there. Oh, really? About a year, yeah. Nice. At Cameron and Minnie. But they're, um, they're in Eugene. Eugene? Mm-hmm. Ah. Eugene, Oregon all their their boys went through the, the waldorf program is waldorf my cousins the whole... on the east coast also went through waldorf schools so are these schools like the whole spectrum like you can have your kids go through high school or is it just a yeah yeah most of them okay. um it depends on the area i think yeah it's better than regular school i can i can say that much 
Yeah, yeah. You know, going through my um, my teacher's training, like getting my master's degree at Lewis and Clark College. Um, you know, coming out of that program, I never thought that I would be critical. You know, of the public school system. Mm-hmm. You know, or like, you know, because really every every kid deserves a, a chance, and we should make our public school systems better so that you know everybody's getting a good education but people with money can just send their kid to the best school and uh you know i'm on that side of like what what can we do (laughs) you know when you have your own kid that you want the best for you know it's are you planning to keep her there at at that type of school goes through kindergarten oh yeah yeah um yeah so she's going to regular school after that? Um, we, we, I don't know for sure. <laughs> yeah. Weren't you There's talking about moving, schools. weren't you talking about moving to, or taking a job in Washington or something and that's where she would go? Well, I've actually, my job is in Washington. It is in Washington. It is, so yeah, I, um, Vancouver. But you were talking about moving there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that still on the but table? But now, now that we bought this place, <laughs> the roots you know, or going down yeah. deeper and yeah. moving it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, 12 years in a, in a house, so much stuff. Anyway. What, so, did you guys do anything with the other house or is it still sort of floating? Uh, we have renter. You We're got, renting it out. You got renters? Yeah, renters, yep. And the whole thing? Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. Nice. Cool. And that's it's <laughs> a whole whole thing. So you're landlords now. Oh. <laughs> How's that feel? Um, neither of us are very good at landlording. <laughs> Does Joe go there with a big stick and make sure everybody's in in order? No, it's like the opposite. <laughs> to um, go with the flow. Yeah. Help me out. What, how how was it like getting people how, how, how what uh what uh, platform did you use to find people or are they friends um online um turbo tenant yeah. was one and the other one was cozy and i just online post your home kind I, of thing i haven't heard of either of those yeah i hadn't either <laughs> so i started i've heard of time. craigslist and zillow that's mm-hmm. all we were using landlords <laughs> but i think we're um depending on how this goes this year maybe we will uh just sell it i don't know we'll see yeah are you pulling Wait. in more than the than the rent cost or the mortgage or What's that? You, are you pulling in the same amount as rent so you're breaking even or are you actually like making money on it well or same as mortgage i mean it's it's like as much as our mortgage on the new houses Mm. so that our our monthly uh, payment isn't too much more than it was before okay but you're building equity in in both of them right yeah Yeah. Yeah. I mean they always say property is one of the best places for investing if you're going to invest somehow we'll see who knows uh, how things turn (laughs) <laughs> could be bad <laughs> but I'm not worried we'll see it's, it, whatever happens happens exactly <laughs> but yeah if um, if I want Elena to be able to go to uh, the art school um, where I teach the magnet school mm-hmm. we have to live in the district yeah so. yeah that's not till sixth grade, so we have some time. So if you guys stay where you're at, does that mean public school is the only option? Or you would consider just like regular private schools, not Waldorf? Well, we can't really school. afford private schools that we'd have to pay for, so maybe charter schools. Mm-hmm. Like there's several like charter schools that operate within the public school systems nearby. Yeah. Yep. So, but they're usually a lottery to get in. You know, mm. so it's like, maybe. 
Just ask Elena what she wants. She yeah. probably already knows. Mm-hmm. She'll be like, it's up in the, it's up in the clouds. I got to get my wings first. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Hogwarts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So no, Joe. Joe's not gonna make an appearance. Maybe. Is he listening? No, he's in the bathroom. Ah. How's your Reiki going? Reiki? Yeah. Reiki's good. I'm supposed to be taking the master class. It was going to be December, um, but the other people that were supposed to be taking Reiki 3 with me are all saying they're busy during that period, so it may be pushed back a little bit, but it should be coming up pretty soon. Is this the like the last series of classes? It's the last one, yeah. There's Reiki 1, Reiki 2, and then the master training, and I've already done the first two. Mm-hmm. But as far as if I'm going to actually be a practitioner and how that would work, uh, I'm not sure. Even as as much as trying to do it in this house, like there's roommates and I, I basically just have to ask the Danny if, if it's okay to do that or not. But uh, I'm not spending too much energy thinking about that right now because I just moved in. So I'm just like enjoying having it. How's it feel? It's good. It's very good. I just gotta make sure I don't get too lazy because I like have. I'm used to being like pushed and pushed and pushed and you know don't know what's going on and trying to survive and all this and now I you know I have some sort of a stability going on so. I could see the possibility for getting lazy to creep in mm-hmm. so I gotta, I gotta make sure that doesn't happen. But it's good. Right. It's it's. It's very good. It's very comfy. Comfy bed. This is like one of those beds that you can, you know, they do the commercial where you put up a wine glass and then jump on the bed right next to it and it doesn't spill over. That's what this kind of bed is. Yes. But then. Temper picnic. Yeah. But then you can't jump on it. You can't bounce on it because there's no bounce. <laughs> no spring. Yeah. Stick in your side. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, there's no box spring. Yep. We were talking about this earlier. I was thinking like box springs probably they probably never had any use whatsoever. It was probably just somebody wanted to make money, so they're like, let's invent a thing called a box spring and make everybody think they need it. <laughs> just like everything else. <laughs> yeah. You just need like slats and then a mattress. Everything needs re- retooling. There's there's no way around it. <laughs> Every single thing. But that, again, can only happen when all the people get their shit together. So we'll eat the, eat the popcorn until then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Elena was, what was she saying? Something about things lasting forever. Yeah. Is our, t- are we ever, is our TV going to last forever? I don't know why. We never, like, we don't watch it that much, but for some reason... And it's like, well, you know, they used to make things to last, so long, <laughs> <Right>. but <laughs> but we progressed since then, so <laughs> everything breaks now. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. Hopefully, California doesn't slide off into the ocean in, in the next ten years. Right. Well, um, let me get the first warning signs you guys come on up okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we'll just float in on the canoe <laughs> <laughs> yep It's fine. 
even if the world's ending, I would just be like making a YouTube video about it. <laughs> of course. Yeah. What else would you do? <laughs> That's really not a big deal. <laughs> what can you uh, What can you control, right? <laughs> youtube videos you can control it yeah i'd be like just okay just wait for like another day gotta upload this real quick <laughs> last just... one make it good <laughs> this will be the last hurrah yep so everything else going good with you guys any other news yeah yep um it's nice to have some time off this week Oh yeah, the holiday yeah. stuff, huh? Yeah, we. Uh, Alan was off the week, the whole week, and I was off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Did Just you guys take any trips or anything? No. Um, we just stayed, stayed at home. We had dinner with uh, Joe's mom mm -hmm. on Friday. Celebrated our Thanksgiving a little late. On Thursday, we took Elena to the um, local family homeless shelter oh, yeah? and, and served a meal. She got to serve the rolls. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, actually, I um, volunteered with this place uh, last year, like three or four times um, before they moved. And it was like 235 folks, mostly kids, um, all like crammed into this one big open space with bunk beds everywhere and no privacy and mm -hmm. it's actually it's really eye-opening i had never um been inside a homeless shelter before so it was um what did what did elena have to say about that experience well they since then this building is like dilapidated the roof was caving in and they had to get the families out of there so they put them up in a hotel mm -hmm. or are leasing and they're leasing the hotel um, so right now the families are all in their own rooms, you know, the bathroom and on Thanksgiving, it was actually quite slow because so many families went to other families, you know, mm -hmm. for the holidays. So there's like 20 families that we served and they just came up to a room and went back to their room. So it wasn't like, um, what I experienced before, which is like, you know, the big long line and yeah. lots and lots of people. But these are people that are actually in like living in the shelter. Yeah, they're living and the, well, right now the they each have a hotel room mm -hmm. that they're living in. So they're no longer homeless. So they're not they're not on the streets. No. Yeah. Well, they just don't have a don't have a home, but they yeah. have shelter and. Um, I know it was really powerful. I think uh, it's something we're gonna do every year. You know, yeah. make it a family tradition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get out there and get in the trenches. Right. See what the people are doing. Yeah. And I think it's, I mean, we have so much and we're so blessed. Um, but I, I like the idea of teaching and showing Elena the, you know, the range that, you know, mm -hmm. should be thankful for what we have and help where we can and where we're drawn to. Yep. So it's good. And they remember the, anybody who's hurting or whatever, they always remember when somebody was actually nice to them or yeah. gave some effort. That's good. Well, that's an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys are coming to visit, right? Soonish? Yeah. Um, I think we're going to leave on Saturday. The, I don't know. I'll have to look on my calendar. 30th or 31st. But like relatively soon, like in a, a couple weeks or something. January. We're in the last week of... No, 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 no. I forgot again. <laughs> it's next yeah, month. Yeah, you sent me that text. You're like, are you coming in two weeks? Yeah, yeah. See, I, I, I will for I'll probably forget again by tomorrow. 
It's just okay. remind me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're heading down. Um, yeah, so my brother lives in Napa. Mm-hmm. And my mom lives in Sebastopol. Yeah. Which is west of Santa Rosa. Okay. Like towards the coast and Bodega Bay. Sebastopol. Sebastopol. So it's on the coast? Well, Sebastopol's like, it's like 20 minutes from the coast. Okay. But, from Bodega Bay. But from here, you said you'd be like close, like an hour away or something? Close? Yeah, well, from, I think it's just like 15 minutes-ish. It's close. Isn't oh. that close to Napa, Vallejo? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's, like actually Nick's girlfriend, Darcy, works at a vet clinic in Vallejo. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. But Napa is like an hour from Sebastopol. I've never, you may have told me about Sebastopol, but I've never heard about that. That sounds like a Russian city. <laughs> it's no, it's like, um, well, I don't know if you've ever been to Ashland. Probably not. Have you driven through it? Maybe Ashland. I don't think Oregon. so. On your road trip, you probably drove through. Yeah. It's some. Um, maybe I did. But then you don't really like go through the town unless you take the exit. That's where Joe and I met and went to college. Oh yeah. And it's like a, no, we call it kind of hippie town, you know, the liberal town in the sea of all the conservative towns, like Medford and Klamath Falls. Is it? Is it like? So hum- that's really similar. Is it like Humboldt? Mm-hmm. Pothead Central. Humboldt. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've only heard rumors. I've never been there. My mom um, decided my senior year in high school to move. <laughs> to go back to school and that's where she went was Humboldt State oh yeah for uh, school psychology yep I had a friend who studied psychology up in Humboldt Mm -hmm. now he just posts memes with old dead philosophers quotes oh man philosophy's fun (laughs) yeah that's good well I think we should probably wrap this up. Yeah, we should. A little bit. And uh, you guys know how many fires in Oregon, right? Mm -mm. Nope. Hopefully the rain continues. Yes. And the snow. Yes. (laughs) And snow on these mountain peaks. We need it. One more full week of rain. We'll be good. Yes. I'll send uh, some energy. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Tell Elena uh, and Joe that I said hello. And... Well, he says hello as well. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, look forward to seeing you guys soon. Yes. Take care. Yep. Thank you, Crystal. Bye, Andrea. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Do I have to do anything on my end? You can click quit Zoom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Up in the top, the top left where it says zoom.us, and okay. then scroll down to quit Zoom. Or close. Or close, yeah. Okay. Or you can Bye. just throw your computer out the window. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Da, da, da. On this side of it. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, weird and not so weird, but interesting. Yeah.